Bos días a todos e a todas. Benvidos a esta primeira conferencia da nova edición do Festival Vertixe Sonora en que se desenvolverá durante os vindeiros 15 días en tanto en Vigo como en Pontevedra. Estamos aquí no espazo Némonon. Antes de nada, quero agradecer a Mauro Lomba, o arquitecto dono deste espazo, a posibilidade de desenvolver aquí algúnas das conferencias desta edición. Hoxe imos presentar a sección española da Sociedade Internacional de Música Contemporánea. Están conmigo o compositor, vicedirector do Conservatorio Superior de Música de Vigo, Xacobe Gaspar Grandal, David Durán, que foi oponente da presentación da digamos, de vertixe sonora na institución, e tamén Javier Hagen, que vou ler algúns dos seus logros, que, ademais de ser integrante e cantante de Um Sanjib, é presidente da Sociedade en Suíza, é director do Foro Suízo de Festival de Música Contemporana Valis, ponente nos Consellos de Conferencia Europea de Promotores de Nova Música, tamén da edición suíza de música e da Comisión da Unesco para Inventario do Patrimonio Cultural e Inmaterial no Cantón de Balais. El fará un percorrido explicando a importancia desta sociedade internacional de música contemporánea dende a súa aparición en Salzburgo en 1922 ata a actualidade e tamén contará un pouco a historia, a intrahistoria da sección española en épocas anteriores. Con sumo gusto, vou ceder inmediatamente a palabra a Xacobe Gaspar e simplemente comentar que para Vertixe Sonora, que cumple este ano dez anos, pois é un auténtico fito o poder participar desta institución e continuar unha laboura que sempre apostou pola renovación das linguaxes musicais contemporáneas e tratar de establecer dende aquí, dende España, dende Galicia, a posibilidade de construir patrimonio cultural, patrimonio musical, cunha perspectiva internacional. Moitas gracias, Ramón. Buenos días a todos. Bueno, en primer lugar, corresponde que felicite a Vertixe Sonora por asumir la sección española de la ISCM, de la Sociedad Internacional para la Música Contemporánea, Realmente é un hito moi importante. Vertixe tiene un enorme prestigio a nivel español, creo que máis incluso a nivel español que en el panorama gallego, e isto, sin duda, pode e debe contribuir a aumentar súa importancia e, seguramente, tamén súa reconocimiento. Tamén quisera agradecer, por a parte que me corresponde a la Sociedad Internacional para a Música Contemporánea, e a súa representante de aquí, Javier Hagen, o que se le haya otorgado a Vertixe esta sección, en tanto que eu creo que vai ser algo realmente de gran importancia para a creación musical en Galicia e tamén en España. E, por último, tamén quero facer un agradecimento personal e institucional, e explico porque a invitación é ha sido como mi papel como compositor compositor gallego e tamén como vice-director do Conservatorio Superior de Música de Vigo agradezo personalmente a invitación e tamén a institución que represento aquí o Conservatorio cando Ramón me chamou hace dous días para comunicarme esta noticia que hoxe anunciamos e para invitarme a estar en esta presentación e, bueno, de entrada de confesar que tenía cierto así temor de no saber explicar eh, en pocas palabras la importancia que esto eh, tiene y puede tener para, para la música en España y en Galicia, ¿no? Pero, de, de, digamos que de primeras se, me asaltó una idea, creo yo que esto supone eh, trasladar al ámbito internacional un valor, un propósito que ha formado parte de Vertice eh, desde sus inicios, e que eu o podría resumir con a palabra normalizar ou insertar en o panorama internacional a creación musical 
en Galicia y, por añadido, eh, en España. ¿no? Y lo que voy a tratar ahora aquí muy brevemente es de resumir desde la perspectiva de compositor gallego, desde la perspectiva de vicedirector de una institución de educación superior como es el Conservatorio Superior de Música de Vigo, que supone normalizar en el contexto internacional y el, el paso ¿no? o el avance que en esa tarea puede suponer el que vertice asuma la sección española de la Asociación Internacional para la Música Contemporánea. Eh, como, como compositor, eh, he vivido el nacimiento de Vertice ¿no? hace 10 años desde sus inicios y he disfrutado, ¿no? eh, tanto como compositor, por las oportunidades que me ha brindado esto, ¿no? como, como público, si me permite, ¿no? la revitalización que se ha producido de la, de la vida artística y musical aquí. Eh, quizás para explicarlo, para explicarlo tendría que poner un ejemplo. ¿no? Eh, realmente antes de que apareciese Vertice, en Galicia, podríamos mm, resumirlo así, no había ningún grupo que hiciese música de nuestro tiempo, que hiciese música de compositores vivos. Y lo que yo considero más importante es que que pusiese en relación la música que aquí se hace con la música del contexto internacional en el tiempo presente. Y es más, además de eso, eso supuso que se estableciese un diálogo estético entre la música autóctona y la música del ámbito internacional. Eh, esto que parece algo normal, realmente es algo bastante... Eh, problemático o de lo que había falta, no solo en Galicia, sino también algo problemático incluso en el contexto español en general. Si, si nos mmm, centramos en el ámbito gallego, yo suelo poner un ejemplo que puede ser un poco exagerado, pero igual no tanto, que prácticamente desde el movimiento de trabajadores de Edad Media, en Galicia no había música hecha, digamos, en consonancia con las corrientes del ámbito europeo, hasta prácticamente nuestra generación, con algún ejemplo anterior muy destacado como Enrique Macías, quizás. ¿no? En el caso español nos tenemos que ir casi a los años 60. Es un poquito antes, con la famosa generación del 51. Corresponde ahora quizás que nos acordemos de Luis de Pablo, que eh, falleció esta semana y que fue uno de, los, eh, de sus miembros más destacados. ¿no? Hasta ahí había una brecha histórica entre la música que aquí se hacía y la música del, del contexto internacional. Y mmm, realmente ese muro, ese muro en Galicia ha sido Vertice el que lo ha roto. Eh, ¿Qué supone en, esta, en, en este sentido eh, el hecho de que eh, Vertice asuma la sección internacional de la ISCM? Sección española, perdón. Bueno, yo creo que es, sin duda es un paso más y es el, el paso en el sentido de, de la carencia que tenemos fundamentalmente hoy en España, que es de proyectar internacionalmente eh, la música que aquí se hace. Creo que en España en general, en Galicia, hay una generación de compositores que hacen música en consonancia con lo que se hace a nivel internacional, pero lo que falta sin duda es la proyección. Y creo que este paso debe ser algo que, que contribuya en ese sentido. Ya desde una perspectiva internacional, digo, institucional, eh, un poco en, en, en mi rol de vicedirector del conservatorio, y en relación con algo que, de, que decía antes, realmente la, la irrupción de Vertice supuso una dinamización de la vida cultural, es decir, ahora hay un, un número, un número de conciertos de música contemporánea y de un interés artístico que hace 10 años no había en Galicia. Y eso para los estudiantes de un conservatorio superior es muy importante poder tener ese contacto directo con la creación artística actual y poder vivir ese ambiente cultural. Pero diría más, hay algo de fondo, yo que soy dado las teorías generacionales, igual que desde el punto de vista de compositor, esa idea de normalizar estéticamente la creación de aquí con lo que se hacía eh, fuera, que es podemos decir que es un objetivo de internacionalización o de relación o de inserción internacional, es algo compartido con el Conservatorio Superior de Música, que en los últimos 10 años ha hecho un trabajo 
a pesar de ser una institución que está en, la, en una esquina de Europa, en un sentido muy importante. De hecho, el, el número de movilidades internacionales es espectacular para las dimensiones del centro. Hoy tenemos alumnos de partes muy diversas de, del mundo. E incluso bueno, eh, el centro tiene dos premios del SEPIE, que es el Servicio Español para eh, la Internacionalización de la Educación. Y eh, el mes pasado hemos organizado un congreso de la Asociación Europea de Conservatorios, el Congreso de Coordinadores de Relaciones Internacionales, que ha juntado ahí en Vigo a coordinadores de, de instituciones de toda Europa y algunas de Asia también y de América. Y creo que realmente esta, esta que instituciones vecinas compartamos objetivos es eh, importante para todos. Y después hay un, un quizás algo más, más de fondo que yo relaciono también con esto de la internalización, es que en un mundo en el que la, el, el valor artístico está tan en duda o este, tiene un espacio tan pequeño en relación al valor comercial del, de eso que podemos llamar objeto artístico, creo que las instituciones que tenemos en nuestro ADN la defensa del arte, de los valores del arte, del valor artístico por encima del valor comercial o otra clase de valor, nuestra supervivencia está ligada a la internacionalización. O nos unimos a nivel internacional o establecemos, establecemos redes de contacto a nivel internacional o es difícil eh, que podamos eh, resistir la fuerza, esta fuerza del mercado. Y por eso, ya como conclusión, eh, lo que deseo es que esta, esta, este hecho que vertice asuma la Asociación Española de la SCPM contribuya tanto al fortalecimiento del proyecto de Vertice como a, a hacer que los frutos del trabajo de internalización que, que muchas instituciones en España eh, llevamos a cabo pues, eh, ofrezca mm, sus frutos. Eh, nada más, eh, mucho éxito y muchas gracias por la invitación. Gracias, Jacobo. Bueno, iba a ser realmente breve, eh, también como parte y anfitrión de la conferencia, pues quiero cederle ya rápidamente la palabra al siguiente invitado, a Javier. Y bueno, lo que me gustaría transmitir es el, el tremendo honor que es para Vertice asumir esta sección española y la gran ilusión con la que afrontamos este reto. Y bueno, es una institución tan capital en el devenir de la música contemporánea que con unos objetivos tan compartidos con, con los nuestros, con los de Vertice, nuestros 10 años de, de recorrido. Y bueno, en la, en la asamblea donde se bueno, oficializó la, la, la asunción por parte de Vertice de la sección española, que tuvo lugar hace un mes, creo que casi exactamente, pues los compañeros de la sección austríaca, que están preparando pues, todas las actividades del centenario, porque es una institución centenaria o va a ser en breve, pues compartían algunos documentos de, de los inicios, del, que nos explicará ahora Javier en detalle, pero los inicios de, de la institución y se veía pues, estrenos de Anton Weber, de Bela Barto con los conciertos, la participación de Manuel de Falla y de un vistazo rápido pues, te, te sitúas en la significación que tuvo esta, y, que, y que sigue teniendo esta institución y también del, del recorrido, los logros eh, tantísimos que han eh, conseguido en este, en este tiempo. Hablaba de esos objetivos compartidos porque eh, creo recordar también que no sé si en los estatutos se menciona casi textualmente que es la, la idea de promover y difundir la música contemporánea, pero haciéndola oír sin prejuicios de, pues, de diferencias de, de raza, de procedencias, de, de estilos. Y bueno, yo creo que es una cosa que me sentí inmediatamente durante la asamblea y previamente en las conversaciones que tuvimos los miembros de Vertice, pues muy identificado. Y además en el seno de la institución pues también se está intentando continuamente pues ampliar y actualizar estos objetivos con cuestiones de género, con, bueno, intentando siempre pues acortar las eh, brechas que pueda haber en comunicación con la gente que se desenvuelve pues eh, menos en inglés, un compositor por ejemplo, o para transcurrir unos ensayos, aunque a pesar de lo laboralizado que está pues el mundo pues siga habiendo ¿no? unas dificultades que, que la institución sigue intentando pues a cortar y, y eso, que nos sentimos muy, muy identificados. Y bueno, la idea de, para vertirse de, de contribuir y colaborar con la ISCM es una, una idea que nos viene rondando desde hace tiempo 
y algunos colegas, Javier mismo nos había ya sugerido en algunos momentos esa posibilidad, pero yo creo que de alguna manera nos sentíamos, no sé si abrumados por, por esa posibilidad y, y quizás ahora esta década de recorrido de Vertice, este, este aniversario que tenemos ahora no es una coincidencia también que, en que demos este paso, pues yo creo que nos sentimos ahora con quizás con la madurez, con la eficacia, con, con la primera vez que podemos echar la vista atrás y tener una noción de, realmente de trayectoria y de un conocimiento profundo del, del ecosistema musical y cultural en, en España. Entonces, bueno, lo, lo asumimos ahora con, con muchísima ilusión y con el reto también que decía, porque eh, bueno, actualmente no había una sección española y eso creo recordar que acabé mi intervención en la, en la Asamblea pues, diciendo que básicamente y muy claramente España debe de estar formando parte y tiene algo que decir, nosotros lo entendíamos así. Y el devenir de la sección española, que también lo explicará ahora Javier, pues ha sido singular y ha sido discontinuo, entonces somos muy conscientes también de la responsabilidad y el reto que, que supone para, para nosotros. Y bueno, que estamos deseosos de, de contribuir y de empezar eh, a apostar por los autores españoles y creo que también en clave gallega pues apuntaba también un poco Sacobe a esto, se abre una oportunidad pues para todos aquellos creadores que por un motivo o por otro, a veces por las cuestiones geográficas o zonas más periféricas, se puedan sentir con menos posibilidades de, de acceder a ciertas eh, eh, estructuras de difusión de, de su música. Y bueno, nada más, muchas gracias. I think uh, I will use the one I have attached on my jacket. So thank you very much for having me here. Um, it's been more or less five years since we met and we first started to speak about the possibility of having Spain back into the ICM. So let me give you, uh, well, I wouldn't say a brief introduction. It's going to be quite opulent as we're going to touch several uh, themes. One is going to be like the general story of ICM, the other one Spanish section, and as an example of what sections do, I will point out a little bit what uh, we did in the Swiss section since I um, took over the presidency. So, um, yeah, ISCM stands for the International Society for Contemporary Music, and this is going to be an introduction by myself as the president of the Swiss section. Maybe let me briefly tell you what my professional context is. I'm a classically trained opera singer and composer and specialized in contemporary music and co-founder member of Ums and Jib, the duo who's going to perform tonight. Um, within these structures, I've premiered more than 300 works and as an organizer, uh, triggered more than 500 other premieres. So naturally, this kind of work uh, brings you to be involved in cultural politics. So I've been involved in different structures, among them ISCM, and you will find the others there. Ramon, you mentioned the others too there too. So it, the important thing is it happens at the local level, at the regional level, at the national, international, not to say uh, global level. And it's always volunteering. So it's not, <laughs> you get not paid for that. So you really have to be engaged in, in order to have these things happening. Well, going back to ISCM, it's an international network, basically. We have uh, members from around 50 countries, and it's about promoting and presenting contemporary music uh, in its, let's say, birth state. I mean, any kind of music that is written or performed today, that's what we like to promote and to present. ISCM currently has 68 independent sections at different levels. I mean, the national sections are the core group, but there are also other kinds of memberships, like affiliated member. We have the um, Canarian from the Canary Islands um, coming in too as affiliate members. And the current president is Glenda Kim from New Zealand. That's uh, quite interesting. I mean, it took almost 100 years to have the first female president. Um, she was elected on 1st of May of 2019 in Tallinn. And, well, it's quite symbolic because New Zealand apparently was the country that introduced for the first time in modern times the right to vote to women 
So it's nice to have a New Zealand uh, president, uh, female president, being the first one because it refers to that historic fact too. Here you can see a picture of the last physical general assembly we had in Tallinn in 2019. You can see in the middle, uh, Glenda Keane. She's almost here, Opla, here. And next to Arvo Pert, uh, the Estonian composer who was uh, um, made honorary member in 2019. And to the right of uh, Arvo Pert, the former president, Peter Swinnen from Belgium. And then, I mean, all the other representatives, you can find me on the left side there, the second, the first row. ISCM is supposed to be the oldest uh, organization to promote contemporary music. It's quite important. I will show you why. Um, I'm referring to the written music in, in the European continent in the 20th century. And it was founded as an initiative on an initiative of the Second Viennese School in uh, 1922 at the Café Bazaar in Salzburg. Um, we had different founding members. Some of them were physically present, others just signed, but you, I mean, there's no need to read the names, I mean, you know them all, but you would not necessarily expect them to be there. So it's, uh, I mean, you can say almost 90% of the relevant composers from Europe in, during the 20th century, they have been more or less uh, closely involved to ISCM. Here you can see a picture of the first committee in 22 the ones that were physically present in Salzburg. And what did they do? I mean, basically, it was organizing concerts. And it was like an annual meeting where you could, first of all, listen to chamber music. And this has been extended during the years. And this structure was called the ISCM World New Music Days, which took place every year since 1923. Here you can find the first page of the initial program in, in 23 in Salzburg with the, uh, I mean, the um, presentation text in English, German, and French, which uh, and took place from the 2nd to the 7th, August 23. And then a picture of Alban Berg, you see him in the middle, surrounded by the uh, uh, members of the um, Havemann Quartet that performed uh, his music. You'll see another one with Arthur Honecker, the Swiss composer, surrounded by, the, by three musicians of the famous Amar Quartet by Hindemith. So they're, they're here, they're also in the way, in 23 in Salzburg. If we have a look at the programs during all these almost 100 years, we can find some quite important premieres, three of them by Schoenberg, Erwartung in 24 in Prague, then 57, the stage premiere of Moses and Aaron, uh, Jakob's Light in Wien, then Przyho uh, Bitroski, I think it's Thorito uh, Astuto, something like this, uh, by, by, by Janacek, made in 25 in Prague. Then all these pieces by Webern, then uh, Misereb by Hartmann, also in 35. I mean, that's quite, <laughs> imagine, I mean, 35, what happened? I mean, there's this German term of entartete Musik, the prosecuted music. And doing this in 35 in Prague <laughs> is quite crazy. It's like, like the, uh, the World Music Days that took place in 36 in Barcelona, like two weeks before the Civil War started, premiering the violin concert by Berg. So it's really, I mean, these first years were, were quite, uh, let's say, uh, uh, sparkling, <laughs> what, the, what they were doing. There you can find, yeah, 36, the, the premiere of the violin concert by, by Alan Berg, played by Louis Krasner. So they had, you had the big orchestras, big conductors being there. Kschenek had his fragments premiered in Barcelona too. Then Matos Hamed by Boulez was premiered in Baden-Baden. Um, of course in the 50s, and Karl Ligeti had there, and then conducted by Stockhausen in, in 1960. And this, is, this goes back also to, to the work of the Italians. I mean, here, let me show you maybe that sheet here. I mean, it's quite nice because it's this, this aesthetics of the 60s with all, all, all with small letters on the Concrete Poesie, Constructive Kunst, so this, uh, this, this school and they made the programs this way. And you can find at the bottom, uh, contacted by Stockhausen, the, the program sheet of the premiere. Some more premieres, I mean, Jung, Silverman, Nankaro, 
Tanaki Stetra is a piece that Arditi is still playing almost everywhere. So when, uh, when he had, I mean, when he's presenting like the emblematic pieces, they have been premiering all these uh, 30, 40 years, they're existing already. Tetra was one of them. And it was premiered in Aarhus in uh, 83. And all these other composers, they also have premieres. So you find well-known names from older composers, but even Nina Schenk, Nina Schenk, Yongi Parpan, Odette Tamimi, Jennifer Walsh, they all had premieres during the, the World Music Days too. Ah, if I remember a special piece, I mean, we're speaking of chamber music, but that was a quite special one by, by Kupchak for 100 motorbikes, electric car, uh, percussion and electronics, which took place in Wroclaw. So just to say that, I mean, it was not just about academic uh, chamber music, but they, there was also space for other th things. This is a picture of the rehearsal when the, the 100 motorbikes were there, like ram, ram, doing this and performing with the hard rock group. And uh, these are the pictures of the performances, of the performance, which included the solo, <laughs> an acrobatic solo. It was quite fun. I mean, uh, also to see how the, these, uh, um, the drivers were driving through Wroclaw and then, then, yeah, I mean, making the sounds they learned during the concert, they were including them in the traffic. Then besides the premieres, there, there were also significant performances. I mean, if you see Pacific 231 by Honecker 24, the piece was one year old. It's, it's really, I mean, they, they, the violin concert by, by, by Prokofiev, Jean de Rossignol by Stravinsky, Sigan by Ravel, the piano sonata by Stravinsky. I mean, all these pieces, they were almost newborn pieces. Let's say the second, uh, the second performance uh, was, was almost done at the uh, World Music Days. Even the, the, the uh, Glagolitische Messe by, by Janáček in 29, I mean, imagine the effort of, for these people to learn such a piece in the 20s. I mean, nowadays we have professional choirs, they've been recording and, and rehearsing this for 50 years. But in the 20s, this meant hundreds of rehearsals just to bring up such a piece. I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing effort they did. Here you see a picture of uh, Venice in 25. I mean, you had the piano sonata by, by Stravinsky performed there, and here you see, can see him with uh, Kazella in front of the uh, Duomo. And the same with uh, Jan Acek, when he had his uh, first string quartet performed in Venice, in front of the uh, um, Palais of the Doge. This is also, um, uh, yeah, special to see. I mean, 35 again, Prague, and we have the Lulu Suite by Berg performed there, and the variations for orchestra, I mean, this was simply dangerous. I mean, just to name it that, like this, it was, not, it was not obvious to do these pieces in these times at these places. So that's, um, yeah, there was a lot of creative energy there. And even if we have a look uh, slightly after the Second World War, I mean, we have 46 in London, and we have the Cartier pour la fin du temps. Well, a new piece, but performed, I mean, at the first uh, World Music Days after the Second World War. And the same thing with the um, Order Napoleon Bonaparte by Eva Schoenberg, which is also a piece about the war. And then in 59, you have um, <laughs> well, the two pieces by Stockhausen in Naples, which goes back to the, to the work of the famous Italian studio for electronic music. Um, that, was, that presented the first concert with electronic music in 57, if I remember well. And, and this legendary studio brought up also the, the pieces by Stockhausen in 59 in Naples. This is a picture of another Piece. I mean, referring maybe to, to, to other types of things. This is by Ryo Jike, the Japanese uh, uh, composer, artist, musician, whatever. And that the Matrix that has been done also in 2014 in Wroclaw, which was a really good, good festival, providing a big variety of, uh, of pieces. The programs of the World Music Days are generally made by a jury. And in, within this jury, you will find many, many composers that are quite famous. I mean, no need to name them anyway, but during the, these years, yeah, you really had brains there and ears there to provide interesting programs. Here you can find some pictures of uh, some uh, festival editions. That's the one uh, that took place in 2016 in Tonyong in Korea. That's the place where Isang Yun was born and they brought up this festival. And in 2016, 
the festival yeah, took place in Tongyong. Here we have a photo from the uh, Beijing festival in 2018. That was a very, very impressive piece by Jia, um, Jia Guo, uh, Guoping um, for um, Gu Cheng. And I, re I really remember, I, I was deeply impressed by this performance. She, she had like a bow and she was sawing this instrument against it in front of this classical orchestra. It was um, a, a woman like playing this gujang like a saw. I mean, the sounds were amazing, but the, uh, but the metaphor was really very, very uh, disturbing, let's say. Uh, and a very impressive festival. I mean, especially the, the orchestra pieces uh, that, that uh, have been chosen in, at that edition. This is a picture from the festival in Tallinn. Uh, we see here a piece by Koto Kasuzuki, uh, Japanese-Canadian composer, which is more like a performance piece. Or, again, Tallinn. Um, the Baltic states are known for the, the choral uh, music. And obviously, that festival had a big focus on choral music too. And what's happening now? Have a guess. <laughs> The festival has been postponed and we meet via Zoom things, I think everyone knows. Um, here you can see, I mean, the, the yellow frame is given to Wendy Jing. He's presenting the festival edition that should have been yeah, happening in 2021 in Shanghai. and has been postponed now to, to March 22. And below Wendy Jing, you see Lucas Ligeti, who's appointed the, the director of the um, 2023 festival. Um, supposed to be in Africa. Then, well, you can find me here, also again on the left, down there. Well, yeah, modern times. Going further to the story of ISM in Spain. Um, if I have a look at the history of the Spanish section, it's one of the oldest ones. It was founded in 23. So um, 22, uh, the society has been founded and within one year, more or less, a dozen uh, of national section, sections have been founded. And Spain came in in 23. It was active until, let's say, yeah, the, the Second World War. I mean, complicated times, of course. Not really active between 46 and 51 because the relevant composers that were in charge of the ISCM have been exiled. So if I remember well, Oscar Espla was organizing concerts within ISCM during several years and stopped in 51. And then when he came back to Spain in 55, he founded again the Spanish section. I don't know exactly how long this was working. Um, I have uh, documents uh, proving that the section was existing still in the mid 80s, but nothing specific beyond this. And then I have again documents um, proving that the, um, the structure um, John Severo was uh, conducting had a Spanish section from 2011 till 17, until the moment you came in. Then if we look at the honorary members that came from Spain, we have Manuel de Falla, who has been one of the very first honorary members in 26, and Oscar Esplá in 65 when the World Music Days came to Spain for the second time. And then we have several Spanish composers that were members of the jury. I mean, no need maybe to explain who they are because you know them better than I do. Um, even that, that Roberto Gerhardt and Cristobal Hart, they're quite closely connected to Switzerland too. They, uh, they stayed there for a long period and uh, they're quite relevant also to the Swiss scene. So we have a look at the World Music Days in Spain. We have twice, uh, we, they happen twice in, in Spain. 36 in Barcelona, 65 Madrid. 36 in Barcelona was a, one of the festivals that is considered to, was considered to be one of the best festivals so far that, uh, that happened. It was related, of course, to the Republican government uh, in, in Catalonia and also to the efforts of Pau Casals with his orchestra and, and he had incredible musicians coming to, to Barcelona during these years as conductors, as performers, as composers. And he was deeply involved in, in having uh, that festival happening in, in, in Barcelona. Um, if we have a look at the program, 
we see, yeah, they mentioned the uh, violin concerto by, by Berg, the Wojtzeck Fragmente that have been performed. Britain was there in person as a pianist performing his uh, uh, violin piano suite. We have the string quartet by Bartok, the fifth, and the violin concerto by Szymanowski. I don't know, do you know, do you know these uh, names, Ernest uh, Anserbe and Hermann Scherchen? Are they familiar to you? So both have been very important in the 10 first years. Both are, uh, I mean, Scherchen was German, but he was active in Switzerland. And Anserbe was the, the conductor of the uh, Orchestre La Suisse Romande. So um, very cl uh, closely related to Switzerland as, um, I don't know what's, what's the word, I mean, there, there was a, um, a Swiss, let's say, businessman that financed a big part of the 10 first years of ICM was Werner Reinhardt. And he was the patron of Scherchen. Uh, and uh, with his support, many things could happen. And that's why you will find many Swiss names in, the, in these very first years either as conductors or jury members, uh, well, sometimes also as composers. Here you can find a picture of Pauka Sanz rehearsing at the Orfeo uh, during four for the World Music Days in 36. Then we have the, the one, the edition of 65 Madrid, also with quite interesting pieces being performed there. I mean, the, the Hölderlin Fragmente by, by Reimann, they were quite new and they have been quite significant. I mean, then the, the survival from Warsaw by Schoen, Schoenberg, even the Stabat Mata by Penderecki, which is the piece that is uh, the one, the core piece of the, of the uh, Lucas Passion. So they, they all have been performed there. Then you have as conductor Gilles Rami, Hans Holliger, and Raphael Frühbeck de Burgos. Um, then if we have a look at the composers that have been represented uh, at the ISM World Music Days. There are some others, maybe less known, but the, let's say, more famous composers are these ones. With the years, they had their performances uh, during the World Music Days. Interesting is that they have the <laughs> connection during, during 30, 40 years, more or less. And the presence of Roberto Gerhardt also, starting in 32 with the last performance in 71. That's quite, uh, um, let's say, special. If we have a look at the Swiss section, so it's uh, was the German and the, the French name. That was founded in October 22, so by Scherchen and Reinhardt. The two names I mentioned like two minutes before. Scherchen, you can see a picture of him here. He was the, the one to uh, premiere, among others, the Pierre Lunaire by Schoenberg. And uh, he was conductor of the Musik Collegium in Winterthur, which he brought to international fame through the work he did there. And as he was involved with the um, Viennese composers too, and they, they were about to found the ISCM, he said, listen, we need someone to pay. <laughs> so he went to his boss and said, hey, listen, uh, we need money for this. Would you like to support this and Werner Reinhardt was a very good kind of player and he was uh, very much involved in also in, in having new pieces performed uh, by himself or being commissioned and then he took care of supporting from one side but then uh, he also took care of uh, founding the Swiss section so almost two, three or four months later the Swiss section uh, was founded. Nowadays the section has 25 members, well, more, more or less, all of them associations with other members. And the members in the Swiss ISCM are local ISCM sections, so in, in different areas from Switzerland, like Zurich, Basel, Bern, Valais. And then we have ensembles that are members in the section, uh, and also concert series and festivals. So it's not one single structure, it's like uh, several structures coming together with a common interest. Switzerland has hosted six times the World Music Days. In 26, 29, 57, 70, 91, and 2004 was the last edition that took place in all over Switzerland. If I have a look at the programs, the 26th edition was a special one, as it was the first big edition, having not only chamber music, but also choral, orchestral, and scenic works uh, there. 
it was like a, the first international success after three years. And there you see some of the pieces that have been performed there. It's, it's quite funny to see that Webern was conducting the piece by Schönberg, also there. And also, in, I mean, fresh pieces of what I read by Honecker, or Psalmus and by Kodai, which were like, yeah, freshly written pieces. And the retablo by, by De Falla. And De Falla was named honorary member in Zurich, if you remember that he was named honorary member in 26. That's a funny page, too. I mean, that, it was the first festival where you had also like big celebrations, people uh, gathering, coming together. And that uh, is from uh, one of these uh, books you have at home where you might sign and they, <laughs> they wrote that like wedding songs, dodecaphonic wedding songs. So it's, uh, they're making jokes. <laughs> if, you, if you read them I in the German text, it's like, I'm going to marry you. And they sing like dodecaphonic canons. It's very funny to, to, to read this. Then we have the 29 edition. That was the first time when yeah, we had a female composer being performed at World Music Days. There was a piece by Henriette Bosman from Belgium. And the thing was, uh, which was quite special also was that 15 from 21 composers were under 30. That was uh, very uncommon, even for these times. Among them were Ullmann and Schulhoff. Here you can see uh, the members of the 29 jury. Pesha was also the one in 57. I mean, that was the stage premiere of Moses and Aaron by Schoenberg. The special thing was, it was the time where also Nuria Schoenberg and Luigi Nono met. So they were rehearsing in Zurich, and Nuria Schoenberg was at the rehearsals, and Nono was there too, and they met and they married. And then they went to Venice, and it was in Zurich when they met. There was the first concert with electronic music. I, uh, I mentioned the uh, Italian uh, studio for electronic music, and then you see the program they performed. And there was another quite scary story. I mean, Robert Robussier was a Swiss musicologist and, uh, and uh, composer, and he was murdered in 57. I mean, he, um, he was gay, and he went to, um, to a prostitute, and he was killed by the prostitute. So one day before the premiere. <laughs> so it was the day of the premiere, composer murdered. It was like a headline <laughs> in the international media. Maybe not things to copy and paste, but... Uh, there you can see a picture of the um, stage version of Moses and Aaron done at the Opera House in Zurich. Here you can see a list of the composers from Switzerland that have been uh, presented at the World Music Days. The first group maybe is the one you might know better. To be mentioned are Konrad Beck and Rob Blum, also Giuseppe Engler, I mean, as for Electronic music and also the caphonic music not being performed very often. Robert Bloom is remembered now as some people have taken over his orchestral works and they have been recently recorded. Maybe you know one or two names from the younger generation. Maybe Oscar Bianchi is the one that turns most, or Helena Winkelmann. Maybe too. David Philip Hefty is also quite internationally involved. As for the honorary members, I mean, of course, you know Honecker, Paul Sacher, you might know too for the Sacher Foundation. And he's been the president of the Swiss section for 20 years. So quite an influential person in the Swiss music scene. Klaus Huber in 94 and Anton Hefley 2020. Um, you might not know, but he wrote this, which is like the Bible of the ISCM. So he documented the first 15 years, 50 years of ISCM uh, in a book, which is Quite important because the archives of ISM have been destroyed. Uh, so there, there were some conflicts during these years, and, and a big part of the archives have been destroyed. So he had to um, search for all this information at many different places. And he wrote a book, which is still the only document having all these documents uh, well compiled. Archives are still existing, they are the Royal Library in Denmark, in Copenhagen. And Hafeli, who is still alive, I mean, he's been named honorary member last year. If we have a look, I spoke of, of what a section can be doing. Let's have a look at what we did since 2014. So one thing was to bring back new music at the Swiss Music Council. For neglection, new music was not represented anymore at the Swiss Music Council. 
So we, uh, we managed to, 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 to get like a board expansion. So we had new music again represented in the Swiss Music Council, which is the um, relay to the federal government. So it's a very important thing. Then catalyzing the Sonat merger uh, is quite important because it's like the syndicate for the freelance musicians in Switzerland. There was a former structure uh, that disappeared, unfortunately. And, and so we had to take care to get the freelance musicians again somehow represented politically and protected financially, let's say, for, by the government. And it was by founding the, the structure which is called Sonart. And the Swiss section was also involved, like bringing these people together and, and get these things working. Then the Swiss Music Edition is an edition by, of, of Swiss composers that, I mean, with all these struggles, was about to disappear. And as we had still some money in our, on our account, and we just gave them all the money um, just to make sure they would not disappear. So th the question is, you have a stru structure and it's like fading away and you can take the risk that it's fading away and then you have to reboot the thing and it will take you five or six years. And there's just a small amount of money missing, so you give them the money, they don't have to disappear. So you, I mean, you, you win three years. Or, or more. So that's what we did there. And then, of course, I mean, like uh, local conflicts, I mean, there, there, have, there have been struggles also at the political level with different uh, sections. So it was quite important that when you have a local government discussing with a local group, they are weak. But as an international section, you can say, listen, I mean, they are part of an international network and you cannot just cut like this. They're connected to the history because of this and this and this and this. And even if the section is not really powerful, as a, um, the way of thinking or, or connecting the thing with another context uh, reminds the politicians maybe to rethink their decisions. So, it, so we could not really save the structures physically, but we could then remind, listen, maybe you, you rethink the thing again, speak to us, be aware of how these things are connected and maybe rethink your decision. So that's what we've been doing there. Then on an international level, it was like bringing, bringing in new members, so China, Shanghai and Brazil. And then another quite important topic was uh, to expand the language of communication. De jure, uh, it was German, French and English in that order. De facto, it was English, of course, but uh, I mean, this means you have to submit annual reports. If I do that in German, it's fine. I'm <laughs> with the law, let's say. But what are the Chinese doing? What are the Russians doing? Or what are the others doing? So it's because if you have to submit, if you can, if you're allowed to submit your annual reports in your own language, um, you can bring in other information. If you have to do that in a language you're not you're not familiar with, this means that you will just do. I mean, yeah, the year started, the year finished, and you signed, that's it. And that's not what we need. I mean, we need like exchange, so, so make it easy to exchange by expanding the languages of uh, communication. And we, so we had in 2018 uh, a status of welcoming languages, including Spanish, Chinese, Arabic, and Russian. Here you can see a picture of the General Assembly in Beijing when this has been approved. Then, I mentioned the, the destruction of the archives. So we have a particular situation in Switzerland having a president that was there for almost 25 years and he was documenting the World Music Days for about 40 years and he had all these documents at home. So it was possible for us to locate and to capture all the missing programs between 1970 up to 2005, ready to research. And so we can complete the ICM archives online based on these documents. Then we had half a name to remember. And then also important was to, to have the Paul Sacher Foundation coming in for all the musicolo musicological work. Because this triggered the, um, the collaboration with other universities. So having the Sacher Foundation in, it's interesting for the others to be part of it. So um, we have them in and with them other players too, in order to have a proper musicological work done. Then in 2019, we made playlists, a simple tool to, um, so you can listen to the programs that are, um, the pieces that are available online on YouTube and SoundCloud 
I mean, you can see here, it looks like this. So in 2004, you have 56 recordings. You can go to the playlist and listen to the pieces that have been performed at these World Music Days, even on the historic um, uh, editions. Same thing on SoundCloud. On SoundCloud. So you can uh, have a, yeah, you can listen to the pieces. I mean, that's the basic thing. I mean, music is about listening, so go there and listen. Then, yeah, the last point was uh, being part of a collaborative series. We um, promoted like Swiss Ensembles Road and had, among others, the Hyperduo touring in Germany. That was last year. Uh, I mean, the pandemic has been making things a little bit difficult, but uh, we managed in a gap having them on tour. Then, uh, again, local uh, tops. I mean, the adoption of the COVID law. Uh, we spoke about this yesterday. Uh, at first instance, the law didn't pass. So it was very crucial for people connected to politicians to... Yeah, to make them understand it's important uh, to pass. So, and in the federal government, imagine we, there were like 20 votes missing. So you don't even need the votes. You need basically abstentions. So if you speak to conservative politicians, I mean, you don't have to even to convince them to vote in favor of the, of the law. It's like, just abstent. Then we get already majority. And so we got this 20 votes, which uh, meant, yeah, quite a big amount of money as immediate help to, 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 to musicians in Switzerland. The same thing for the quota increases. I mean, basically the national broadcasts, they have a fixed amount of money they spend on royalties. But uh, if you only have 10% of Swiss musicians being played, it means that 90% go to Lady Gaga. And... Uh, so we, we managed to have an increase up to 50% in Switzerland. So money that was already ready really went to, the, to Swiss musicians and composers. And through ICM, we managed to have this then done in Romania and Latvia too. So it's, I mean, you, you share, I mean, the things you do in your own country. I mean, you keep things moving and then you share and you maybe you can, you speak to 10, two might change something. Then every year, of course, I mean, we have uh, six works that are submitted for the ISM Work Music Days. And we make sure, I mean, uh, the money that is needed for this is raised by our structure. Here you can see the six composers we submitted for this year. It's uh, Sachi Kobayashi, Karin Wetzel, um, it's David Hefti, um, Fritz Hauser, uh, Fernando Garnero, and Tobias Krebs. And Karin Wetzel has been selected. Then, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, a, I wouldn't say a sad thing, but at least uh, since 2015, we also have female composers sent. It took us almost 100 years to have, for the first time, uh, female composers sent to the World Music Days. But since we have this team on the board, almost half of the composers sent there are women. And so I was part of the Young Composer Award in, in Wroclaw again. So we had the piece by, by um, Stefan Prinz, and uh, that won the prize. It was a piano hero for um, a MIDI piano. And yeah, then I'm a member of the working groups uh, within ISCM. So as a section, you can be part also of the society by, by contributing to things that are done uh, in the working groups. So I am in the archive sustainability and communication group. If you have a look at ISCM now, I briefly spoke of collaborative projects, so mentioning the exchange program we did with the Hybrid Duo and this is going on with different other ensembles. There's the so-called virtual collaborative series, which is like an uh, online social media promotion program where two pieces a week are promoted. Um, and then there's a, another thing uh, we launched, which is the International Choral Competition Contest for the Centenary of ISCM which is hosted by four different sections, among them Estonia, the Basque section, Latvian, and the Swiss section. If we have a look at the virtual collaborative series, it looks like this, and then on social media and on the websites of the sections, uh, every, yeah, that's the most recent one. That's the one from uh, Friday. 
um, from the uh, Romanian section. So um, basically the composers presented and the specific work and with a link to a recording. And uh, until now, I think it's, it's more or less about 100 works that have been presented this way. So at least some things have been done. These are the ones uh, that we promoted from Switzerland. Again, Sacha Kobayashi, and then Abri Padilla, Klaus Huber we had there to commemorate because he, he passed away. Alaya Graf, Hans-Peter Kiewitz, and Heidi Badenops. Um, coming to the choral composition contest, so we have four categories. Every section is hosting one of them. The Swiss section is uh, hosting the Equal Voices category, um, which is already closed. We had 108 entries and, uh, from 78 composers. Then there's the uh, category for children choirs, which is open now until the 10th of January. And then the mixed choirs for amateurs and professionals are about to open. The idea is, I mean, of course, to have the composition contest, but besides the prizes, there are special mentions. And the idea is to have all these pieces published. So if we took over like 20 pieces from our side, we expect to have 70, 80 pieces to be published and to be spread to, to, I mean, to trigger also, uh, let's say, contemporary propositions within, yeah, within ICM and outside the usual context of ICM. Here you can find the, the prize winners. I mean, we had two prizes ex equo, and then a third prize and all these special mentions that have been uh, chosen. There you will find the three composers that won the prize. Uh, the, on the left, that's uh, Jan Schumacher. He's the vice president of the World Choir Association who was in, in our jury uh, form. And Erik Whitaker is going to, one, to be the one to conduct the, the premier concert uh, in Basel at the Stadtcasino, which you can see here. And the two choirs who are singing are the Jugendkurs Zürich and the Manager in Basel. Both are internationally choirs of international fame and managed in Basel. They won like the, the two or three world championships uh, for, for these semi-professional choirs. So they're really incredibly gifted and very initiative and doing a proper work. So it's, so it's also, I mean, the idea to bring up this, this contest was also to get a bit outside the pure academic context. So to make a step also towards other other uh, contexts. Then let's have a look at the upcoming World Music Days. The 2020 and 2021 have been postponed. The one from 2020 should have been happening in New Zealand. So it's going to be in August 22 in Auckland and Christchurch. The one in Nanning should have been happening like one month ago. And it's going to happen in March 22. And then the centenary is uh, special as it's supposed to be at a place where never before the World Music Days have been happening in Africa, in South Africa. And the idea is really to, to, yeah, to bring Africa for the first time uh, to that context, but really with their context. So it's uh, like to ideally to, to, to have a, a discourse which is completely like decolonizing. So to, to do things really differently. Which was also, I mean, the, the things that the, the ISM has been doing historically, basically in the first years, it was the first structure to, to bring all the parties from the First World War to get together in peace. That was, of a high, that was, was highly symbolic in the 20s. So, um, so it was like a direct consequence of the United Nations, the Völkerbund that was founded directly after the First World War. And if you remember the programs, we, the looks we had at the programs, that uh, they, were, they, were, they were highly engaged. So, so somehow we're coming back to this idea of, of really uh, yeah, trying to think these things differently in order to be ahead again and not behind. Um, yeah, so this to close. Also to make to give a, an idea of, of the motivations, I mean, by the society in general, or maybe also my personal motivation, why I'm doing this or why I'm involved in this this uh, structure. 
I mean, it's about diversity, innovation, long-term impact, and it's, I mean, don't wait, act now. And act not as an individual, I mean, that's one way, but uh, try to do that within a global community and with different, uh, let's say, uh, visions in, in order to keep music creation alive, accessible, because this makes sure that people can be contributors and, and creators. It's, it's a very simple thing. I mean, open up and the probability will increase, rise, let's say. I mean, I deeply believe, I mean, this is essential to individual growth and to our, as it's written here, collective future. And it's by stepping forward that, uh, yeah, sustainable change happens. So it's, as we say in German, packen wir es an. Let's take it and, and, and do it. Uh, that's it. It's future is now. So um, if you have to have further information, you can photograph this QR code and then you will go to a PDF where you find links concerning ISCM. Um, yeah, so if there are any questions, time now. After this avalanche. <laughs> Of information. Incredible uh, your presentation and yes, really documented and we are honored to participate of this project. Really honored. Happy to have you here. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to present this and we hope uh, <laughs> uh, in German we say we're packing in Stieb and Hörnern. So it's an Tomar el toro por los cuernos? No? Okay, so thank you very much.